Good morning. The spirit is high in this place. Because we have so much to be thankful for. If you don't know what you are thankful for, you look to your left or you look to your right and you ask the person next to you, do you see me? So if they see you or you see them, that's a blessing. And we want Mother Felt, we're going back a little bit and I need your help. I believe I run on, see what the end would be. I believe I run on, see what the end would be. I believe I run on, and see what the end would be. There's something at the end that's waiting for me. I believe I run on. See what the end will be. I believe I run on. See what the end will be. I believe I run on. See what the end will be. There's something at the end is waiting for me. I believe I pray on. See what the end will be. I believe I pray on. Oh, see what the end will be. I believe I pray on. See what the end will be. There's something that the end is waiting for me. Oh, amazing grace. How yeah. sweet the sound that a savior rich like me. I once was lost, yeah. but, but now I'm found. But was blind, blind, but now, now I see. I believe I run on. Oh, see what the end, end will be. be. I believe I run on. See what the end will be. I believe I run on. See what the end will be. Yeah. Something at the end is, is waiting, waiting for me. Said, Father, I stretch my yeah. hand to thee. No other help I know. Or if I die, will draw thyself from me. Oh, where the shall I go? I believe I run on. See what the end will be. I believe I run on. See what the end will be. I believe I run on. See what the end will be. There is something that the end is waiting for me. I believe I sang on. Oh, see what the end will be. I believe I sang on. See what the end will be. I believe I sang on. See what the end will be. There's something that the end is waiting for me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I believe I run on. I believe I run on. I believe I run on. You know, I started running a long time ago. And I didn't know what I was running for. But when I found out that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was at the end of that road, I knew I had to continue to stay running. I had to. A couple months ago, I buried my sister. Mm. Last night, we celebrate my sister's birthday. And my mother had still been here. She'd have been 100 years old. So I know that 
wherever they are and wherever I'm trying to get to is a better place than where I am right now. Come on, Dave. Good morning, good morning. I ask that everyone stand while I do the reading of the word. I'm coming out of Psalm 41. I'm going to read the whole <clears throat> blessed is he that is considered the poor the Lord will deliver him in a time of trouble the Lord will preserve him and keep him alive and he shall be blessed upon the earth and thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of the language thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All, <coughs> all that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. And evil disease say they cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, my own, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which I did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me, and raise me up that I may requite them. But this I know, that thou favors me, because my enemy doth not trump over me. And for and as for me, thou upholdest me my iniquity, and settest me before the face forever. Blessed be the Lord, God of Israel, ever, from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen, amen. Come on, let the church say amen. amen. You know, Deke called me up here. I had a song on my mind this morning when I got up. All through Sunday school, they kept saying in my mind. But when Deke called me, it just vanished. And I said, then, Lord, I guess that wasn't the one I was supposed to sing. So, if you will, I'd like to ask you this question. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, were you there? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they whipped him all night long? Were you there when they whipped him all night long? Oh, were you there? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they pierced him in his side? Were you there when they pierced him in his side? Oh, were you there? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when he hung his head and died? 
Were you there when he hung his head and died? Oh, were you there? Oh, were you there? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? I don't know. I know you weren't there, but when I think about it, the suffering, the pain that they put him through all night long. The word said they led him from hall to hall. Never said a mumbling word because they knew who he was. He knew what he came there to do. Couldn't nobody do it but him. And he's able today, I tell you. For those of you who don't know him, if you just call on his name, he'll come see about you. Because he answered your prayer because he's God. He's a living Savior. He's the triune God. He's the everlasting God that still sits high and looks low. And he got all power. All power is in his hand. We just praise you, Lord. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord, sometimes it causing me to tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Hallelujah. Were you there when they crucified? my Lord. Father in heaven, we come to you this morning, Father, with humble hearts, with thanksgiving in our heart, thanking you and praising your name, thanking your Father for who you are, that you're God all by yourself, thanking your Father for another day's journey, but most of all, Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross. And not only did he die there, Father, but you raised him up three days later. Now he sits on the right hand of you, interceding on our behalf. I thank you. I thank you. And Father, I ask that you will continue to watch over us. You lead us and guide us. Have us to go and say and do the thing that you will have us to do. And we will always give you the praise and the glory. Because it's all about you. It's not about us. Help us in the mighty name of Jesus. That we will put you first in everything that we do. You know us, Father. You know us better than we know ourselves. You know everything about us, Father. Help us, Father. You said in the word that if we look to the hills from which cometh our help, our help come from you who made the heavens and the earth. We thank you, Father. I thank you. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would open up our hearts. Open up our mind. Open up our ears. Open up our eyes, Father, that we see, hear, and do what you want us to do, Father. Because you're working, Father. You're working each and every day. Have mercy on us. We need your mercy, Father, because you are on your way back. And you ain't coming back to save nobody this time. You coming back to take them back with you that you have saved already. Help us, Father, to be ready. Be ready when you come. Help us, Father. And we will always give you the praise and the glory. Now, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you will bless our pastor. We lift him up to you, Father. Continue to bless him. Continue to teach him. Continue, Father, to draw him closer and closer to you. Help him, Father. 
him and his family, Father. Plant your angels of protections all around them, Father. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. Now, Father, I ask that you would bless the sick and the shut-in, the one that's in the hospital that can't get out, the one that's at home. Bless them, Father. You said just a touch from you would make everything all right. Father, continue to bless Deacon and Sister Jordan, Father. Continue to touch them, Father. Continue to heal their bodies, Father. Because nobody can do what you do. Nobody, Father. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. We bless, Father, that the caregivers, bless them. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you will continue to bless our motherboard. Continue to heal the ones, Father, that are sick, the ones that don't feel well. Father, you are our doctor. You are everything that we need. Help us in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you the praise and the glory. Now, Father, I ask that you would bless the ministers, fathers of this church. Each one of them, Father. That they will continue to teach, preach your word. In season and out of season. Don't change anything. Bless them, Father. To go out and tell a dying world about a man named Jesus and what he can do in their lives. Father, I ask that you will continue to bless the deacon boy, that we will be better servants, Father. Service is what you call us to do. You was a servant, Father. So help us to serve, Father, and we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. Now, Father, I pray for our children. The devil is out, Father. He's out trying to seek, kill, and destroy. But, Father, you said who you have in your hand, the devil cannot pluck them out. Keep your hand on them, Father, as they go to and fro. Surround your angels all around them, Father, because they are the future. Help us, Father. You said bring up a child the way that he should go, and he will not depart. Help us, Father, to teach them. Teach them who you are. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. Father, I ask that you will bless the choir, bless the musicians, that they will continue to sing Zions unto you. Bless St. Peter. Continue, Father, that we would be on one accord. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. This prayer I pray in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Somebody clap your hands before the Lord this morning. Somebody clap your hands as if the devil's head is in between them. Somebody clap your hands and give God the praise that he deserves. Somebody just shout unto God right now with a voice of triumph. Shout unto the Lord as if you've got the victory in Jesus Christ. Somebody give God a praise as if the blood still works. Somebody give God praise as if the blood works for you. Somebody give God praise as if the blood worked just this week for you. Somebody give him praise as if the blood worked this morning for you. Somebody give him praise as if you know the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all right to shout hallelujah. That's the highest praise. If you truly came to praise him, just open your mouth and shabak him right now. I can't praise him for you. You can't praise him for me. So if you came to give God praise this morning, take this opportunity to open your mouth and praise the true and living God. If you're here, you might as well praise him. If you got up out of your bed this morning, put on some clothes. Got in your car. Hey. Put gas in your car. Drove all the way down here. Hey. You might as well give him some praise. 
you. I didn't come to perform for you. I came to praise the true and living God. He has all power in his hands. I don't know what you need from him, but whatever you need, God's got it. Whatever you want from him, he's got it. If you need healing, God's got it. If you need deliverance, God's got it. If you need salvation, God's got it. So whatever it is that you need, and you're here in this building, lift up the name of the Lord in this place. We welcome you to St. Peter, where we give God our best praise. In virtual land or in the building, make this your sanctuary and lift up the name of the Lord for he's worthy to be praised. Oh. Come on, clap your hands real quick. Come on, let me hear you clap your hands. Come on. Hey. Ooh. Song says, I got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. Come on, you say, this means war. Clap your hands if you believe it. Hey, say, this means, this means war. Ooh, this means, this means war. Put your hands together. Say, this means war. This means war. watching while I pray and no matter the attack oh I won't turn back come on clap your hands and say hey 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 this means this means what
Look at somebody say, I got it. I got, it. I got the victory. Hey. Come on, lift your hands in this place. God, thank you for being present. You are with us. You said you would never leave us nor forsake us. You said that no man can pluck us out of your hand and we are with you this morning. Come on, St. Peter, send them a praise. Oh, you're so worthy. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Heals us when we're broken. Strength where we believe. Forever he sure. Come on, you know it. Say, my God. My God is all Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weak.
right now in the valley and he's hiding us from the wind our God is awesome you're healing us when we're broken strength where we have been weak God in the name of Jesus we have gathered in this place this day to lift up praise and honor and glory to your name we've come to this place Lord today some with heavy hearts some with light hearts some with joy some with sorrow Lord but we've come together today collectively corporately to say thank you Lord we say thank you Lord for the grace and the mercy in which you show us every day because we know, Lord, that every day we receive new mercy from you. And for that, we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your protection, your provision, and your power in every aspect of our lives. We say thank you today, Lord. We say thank you, Lord, for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you will do as we continue to trust in you. We thank you, Lord, for those who are here. We thank you, Lord, for those who are joining us virtually. We thank you, Lord, that you have just been God father to each of us lord who claim you as our father and our savior 
We pray now, God, as we come to this moment in time, this sacred moment, when your word is opened up, God, we pray that you'd open up our hearts, open up our minds, that we may hear your word, open up our ears, Lord. But Lord, let your word not just rest in our ears and let it get in our heart, but let it not just rest in our heart. But I pray, God, today your word would get in our feet that we can walk out, Lord, what we learn in your word this day. We pray, God, that you let us hear your word, Lord, that we may walk in the victory that is already ours in Jesus Christ. We pray, God, that you let us receive your word today, Lord, that we may live the life that is pleasing unto you. We pray, God, that you speak, Lord. If you want to hear from the Lord, say, speak, Lord. Speak to our hearts, Lord, that our joy may be full. If you want to hear from the Lord, say, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord, that our peace may be complete. We ask God to speak to us. And as you speak to us, Lord, let us hear it and let us obey it. In Jesus' name. Can somebody say the name with me like you mean it? In Jesus' name. That, that one like you mean it. In Jesus' name. That name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, him who died for our sins. In the name of Jesus, him who lived and died and lives forevermore. In the name of Jesus, somebody said the lily of the valley. In the name of Jesus, the bright and morning star. In the name of Jesus, him who is able to keep us from falling. In the name of Jesus, who is coming again. We say thank you. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say, let's say it together three times. Amen. 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 Now, if you know God has been good to you, give him a strong praise today. Give him a, a strong, I'm not tired yet praise. Give him a strong praise. Go a little bit further now. Push yourself. If God has been good to you, just let it all out here, right here, right now. In the name of Jesus. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. So look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. God has been good to me. And because he's been so good, I'm going to give him the praise and the glory he rightfully deserves. Now let's give God some strong praise right now. Some real out of your heart praise. Out of your heart praise. Has he made a way? Give him some praise. Praise like he's made a way for you. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. We're grateful for those who are here today who has joined us on this first Sunday of March, this first Sunday of this third month of March. We are grateful for your presence today. We're grateful for all those who are our guests. We thank God for those of you who have been our guests for several weeks. We're glad to have you. Glad to see your face. Turn around. If you see somebody you haven't seen before, just tell them, wave at them and say, God bless you. Wave at them and say, God bless you. Even if you've seen them recently, say, God bless you. And if you know them but ain't seen them in a while, tell them, say, God bless you. Glad to see you. Amen, amen. We want to acknowledge the family of our own sister Brenda Ray, as well as Deacon Edwards that are here today to celebrate uh, sister Brenda Ray's birthday. If y'all would, if y'all related to her, a friend of hers, wave your hand and let's give God a praise. Right, there we go. Let's give God a praise. Give God a praise. Put your hand together for her birthday. We don't got to call the number. She looks good. We're just saying thank you. Amen. For her family today and being here with us. See, a lot of folk have birthdays and they have parties and don't come to church, but I'm glad, I'm glad, and I'm not talking about nobody, I'm just saying what I'm saying. We're grateful for this, her inviting her entire family to join her today to help celebrate her birthday. Let's give God one more praise. Y'all, y'all kind of slow with the, the hand claps today. Don't make me work you. Amen. If you got your Bibles, join me in the book of Psalms. I'm not going to hold you very long. Somebody told me to do three points and get out of here. And I normally do three points, but sometimes those three points have sub points. And that's what the problem is. There's never really more than three points. Sometimes they have sub points, but we're going to just let the Lord have his way today. Somebody say amen. Amen. I don't want to stop what the Lord is doing because it may be something that you need to hear because I'm not in charge of this sermon, but we're going to let the Lord have his way, man. In the Psalm 124, the 124th Psalm, somebody say amen, the 124th Psalm. And when you get there, say amen, so I know you're there. I think y'all, everybody know where the Psalms are. Deacon Thomas, did you move Deacon King over there? Can you come back? 
Oh, you didn't move him. Okay, I thought. I thought he had somebody that shifted him in the formation. There we go. There we go. The 124th Psalm. I'm going to read eight verses, but I'm going to back back up and, and touch on one. Y'all might better figure it out. Psalm 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone up over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let me read that. Y'all read that with me together. That first part of chapter of Psalm 124, verse 1. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Can we read it one more time? Let's read it together. Though. Let's see it. Let's say it together on three. One, two, three. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Amen. Let's give God praise right now just for that right there. If you feel it. If you feel like that's your testimony, give the Lord some praise right now. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to get some expression to have expectation. There we go. There we go. Now you can go ahead and sit down. Got to have some expression to live in expectation. As we have been almost three years now, um, having Bible study each night, we have, the Lord has given us as our title for this season, however long it will last. And I'm not stopping to the Lord say so, or Jesus comes back. But we've given a title of living in expectation that we have discussed in many ways and many formats and many methods. We've discussed uh, the word of God and how it causes us to live not as the world lives, a world that lives in anticipation of the worst, but as a people of God who live in expectation of God making moves in our lives that only God could make. Uh, living in expectation is living with the truth that God is in charge. Living in expectation means you know that God is going to make good on his word. Uh, living in expectation means that you put your complete faith and trust not in yourself or not in anybody else, but you put your entire trust and faith in the Lord. And for those of us who lived and expected and been on Bible study at any point during the last three years, we have seen a lot of things happen over the last three years. We started off um, days after we started Bible study, we moved into a worldwide pandemic. We had pandemic, we had political upheaval in the White House, we had social unrest, we had people killing folk for no reason at all, we had police officers killing people in a brutal way. We've seen a whole lot of stuff. We are looking at war in nations and other nations. We have seen balloons fly across the United States, but one thing has been certain. God is still in control. And for the children of God, we live in expectation of God's control, not just being a general control, but a control specific to our lives. Uh, there have been many testimonies, many stories, and many things that have been shared with me during this pandemic. We found ourselves going through personal trials and tribulations, yet each time God has always prevailed. How many are willing to say right now that no matter what you've been through the last three years, God has always prevailed? How many, how many can say it like you mean it? You've been through some ups. And you've been through some downs. You've been on some mountains. You've been through some valleys. You've been in some storms. You've been in some sunshine and days. But one thing has been sure, God has still been in control and brought us through. One of the challenges that we face as Christians is not necessarily always stuff we do, but stuff that is done to us or directed to us for our detriment. I want to take my time here. One of the challenges we face as Christians, and I said this, I think it was last night on Bible on Expectation Moment. When we find ourselves really on fire for the Lord, you can expect that Satan is going to begin to attack you. How many know what I'm saying? 
When you really saying, Lord, I really want to live for you. I really want to love you. I really want to do what you've called me to do. And at that moment is when Satan would draw up a plan to seek and he distract you. Let me just make this plain right here. When you are serving a true and living God, Satan can't defeat God. No way in the world because our God is omniscient, omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. That's who our God is. He is sovereign in all things. And because of that, he is victorious no matter what. All Satan can do is to try to trick us, to try to trip us up to try to distract us, try to prevent us from doing that which God has ordained for our lives. In other words, Satan says, I see God about to bless them. And so let me see what I can do to keep them from their blessing. I see God trying to give them a breakthrough. Let me see, can I stop them from getting their breakthrough? I see something about to happen. I want to stop them from getting what God has for their lives. And keeping that in mind, it's important for us to know that if we know that there are enemies we face, and let me be very clear, our enemies is not Mr. So-and-so or Sister So-and-so. We wrestle, not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. And keeping that in mind, as we look at our text for today, as we look at this 124th Psalm, it's important that we look at this not so much just as an inspiring word, but we look at this one Psalm 124 as an instructive word. This word here is a word of instruction to all the children of God in light of what we have to face in our Christian lives. Let me say one more time. This word, I want you to look at it as an instruction manual on how we are to consider the life in which we live. This is an instruction manual allowing us to see what God desires for our lives, what God wants us to do, and where God wants us to be. This 124th Psalm, if you will, is a psalm of a sense or a song of degrees. It was a psalm uh, that was written. It was a psalm that was designed to be sung as the people of God came back to Jerusalem, to the temple, to worship one of the three feasts of the year. There were three feast that God demanded and commanded his people to attend the feast of Passover, the feast of Pentecost and the feast of tabernacles. And these were times when all of the people of Israel, all the Jews would come from wherever they lived, they would come back to the temple to celebrate, to honor God, to worship God. And these Psalms were, if you would, designed so that they would get the right mindset and the right heart set as they came to worship God. Now I want to be clear. Some of them had to come a long way through a lot of stuff uh, to get to that worship moment. Some of them had to deal with persecution and prosecution. Some of them had to deal with distance and time, but this psalm was designed that they wouldn't worry about what they had been through. They would just worry about who they were serving. And I want us to understand, look at our lives. Every day of our lives, we got to go through something. Anybody have to go through something? We got to deal with something. We have to go through something. And, and what this psalmist wants us to understand, as you walk the walk of a child of God as you sojourn in this world. Sometimes you got to have a song. Tell your neighbor, you got to have a song. Got to gotta have something to sing. Sometimes we sing uh, the wrong music at the wrong time. Sometimes we sing the blues when we ought to be singing praise and worship. Sometimes we sing in the wrong song at the wrong time. And as a result, it affects our walk with the Lord. It's um, starting at some... 120 all the way to Psalm 134. Each of these Psalms was to be sung, particularly when the people of God, I want to give a historical context. When they got to the temple of Reb McKinch, there were 15 steps from the bottom to the top where you walked into the temple. And there were 15 Psalms here. They each song, I want y'all to picture this. They would step on one step and they would sing a whole song. They would take another step and they would sing a whole another song. 15 steps, and let me, let me paint the picture even better. The choir wasn't in the church. They weren't in the temple. They were outside the temple singing as people were walking to the temple. Can y'all imagine that right there? What if we put the choir, where did the choir go? What if we put them out in the parking lot? And that means if you came to church with a bad attitude, by the time you got in, guess what? You were already ready for church. Can y'all picture that? What if you came to church and you were worried about tomorrow, but when you heard the choir singing on the parking lot, guess what? You felt better on the inside. Well, let me tell you this right here. The choir ain't got to be in the parking lot for you to sing a song. 
The choir does not have to be in the parking lot for you to realize and recognize what God has done in your life. Matter of fact, you ought to be at home with your power off because you can't work your radio, but you ought to have a song in your heart that reminds you of what God has done for you. If God has done anything for you, you ought to be able to praise him no matter what. The first psalm of this song of Ascent 120 uh, gets the ball rolling. The psalmist says in Psalm 120, my distress, I cried unto the Lord and he heard me. You see his mind getting the psalmist, his songs were written, got the people's mind right. He's reminded himself in my distress, I've been through some stuff, but when I've been through it, I cried to the Lord and guess what? He heard me. It's important for the children of God to know that when we're going through something that we can call on God. And if you know that you can call on God and you know that God can hear you, won't you feel better? It's, don't you feel better knowing that when you call God, God is not going to send you the voicemail? Don't you feel better knowing you can call God and not God is not going to say, call me at another time? God will not only take our call, but God will hear our request. Somebody ought to say man by that. How many of us have called somebody we couldn't reach them when we needed them? Anybody ever been there? But how many of us ever called God and God said, not right now? Never happened. Never happened. The first psalm in this, this song of a sense lets us know, reminds us, if you would, that, that God is and God will hear our prayer. This 121st psalm moves a step further. The psalm said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hill which from whence cometh my help. Why? Because my help coming from the Lord which did what made heaven and earth the psalm the songwriter said and the people understood that when you lift up your eyes into the hills if you lift up your eyes to God what you will be reminded of is that God is your help when you think your help comes from the world you can always be disappointed when you think your help comes from somebody else you can always be disappointed when you think that you can help yourself you will always be disappointed. But when you come to the understanding that your help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth, it gives you more of a posture of belief and understanding and expectation that everything is going to be all right. In this 122nd Psalm, they're, they're on the third step now. The psalmist says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The psalmist says, I'm feeling better already. If you can imagine, the psalmist was well, on the third step. And before they even got to the temple, they felt better already. Say, I'm glad. I'm glad that I get to go in here and lift up praise to God. I'm glad that I can go here in the temple and hear some songs of Zion. I am glad. I feel better already. I might still have the same problem. But I feel better already. How many ever came to church when you got to church, you felt one way? But when you got in here, you felt another way. Anybody ever had that happen? When you pulled up on the parking lot, you just couldn't hardly get out the car because you were burned down. But somehow, some way, maybe it was pre-service prayer. Maybe it was devotion. Maybe it was praise where somehow you started feeling better just because you were in the house. Fourth step. The psalmist is made it more personal now. He says, unto thee, I lift up mine eyes. In Psalm 121, he said, I lift up mine eyes unto the hills. In other words, he was looking to the general space where the presence of the Lord was. But now he says, Lord, it ain't about the hills. Now it's about me and you. I lift up mine eyes. I'm tired of looking at my circumstance. I'm tired of looking at my situation. I'm stop looking. And that's what God is telling us. Stop looking at what you're going through. And look up to God. See, when you look at your circumstance, you're liable to trip up. You're liable to fall down. Here's the truth. You're liable to get depressed. If you tell, how, how many of you understand that? If you just keep looking at what you got to deal with, then won't that make you sad? But if you realize, I'm not looking at this. I'm looking at him who controls my situation. It'll change your outlook. Now, I didn't hear enough people say that, so I'm going to tell somebody, here's your prescription. The next time you get caught up in what you're going through, stop looking at what you're going through and start focusing on him who has control of your situation. But now, we've had one step, two step, three step, four, and this fifth step. The songwriter, the psalmist, and the people move to a broader understanding of the reality 
of their situation. Here's what the psalmist says. If it had not been the Lord, if it, it, in the, in the, and it says, I, I've been through some stuff, and you got to remember, Israel at this time was persecuted everywhere they went. There was never a safe space for the Jews. There was never a safe space for the children of God. No matter where they were, they were surrounded by enemies and they knew that at any moment an enemy could turn on them. But they said, if it had not been, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. I mean, y'all know the term, the word Emmanuel. We sing it every Christmas. God with us. This word, these words right here in this first verse, Psalm 124, are the past tense of Emmanuel. In other words, the psalmist is saying, if it had not been for the fact that God was with us. I'm going to take my time here if I can. What the psalmist by the Spirit of God was trying to express here was that each child of God has to have this as their core, as their basis for their dependence on God. Why? Because God is with us. Somebody said it to yourself, God is with me. If you're a child of God, therein is the core basis of your ability to say, I trust in God. Why? Because God is where? He's with me. I, I still heard about 24 people say, let me get a few more people. God is with who? He's with you. He is not ever uh, on vacation from you. God never takes a sabbatical from us. He is always with us. The psalmist, the reason why we can call on God is not because he's available uh, remotely. We can call on God because he's where? With. I'm going to take my time here because y'all y'all don't want to do this right here, but I'm, yeah, we're going to do this together here today. I've come to learn is when God is with you and he's always with you because the Bible says he would never leave us nor forsake us. And if he would never leave us nor forsake us, where is he is? He's with us. He's with us. His presence. Psalm 16 said, in the presence of the Lord is joy. Can I say it right there? How many have ever been through that situation where you're going through some stuff, but you still got joy? Anybody ever been there? You, you lost some stuff, but you still got joy. You lost somebody you love, but you still got joy. The doctor told you something you didn't want to hear, but you still got joy. Somebody said you weren't going to make it, but you still got joy. Why? Because we are in the presence of the Lord, and in the presence of the Lord there is In this second part of this first verse, it is clear that God's presence is not as an observer. It's clear that God's presence is not as a spectator, but it's clear that God's presence is as a participator in whatever we're going through. Let me say this again. Whenever you're going through something, God is there, okay? But he's not just there saying, hmm, look what Arthur King going through. He is there to assist and to help, quite frankly, to take over your situation. Let me see if I can say this another way. Because God is there, he is not a stagnant God. He is an active God. That's why in the previous of these two previous Psalms, we see that God made the heavens and the earth. Why did he say that? Well, the psalmist wanted us to understand that the God we serve is not a God who is a stagnant, stationary God. He is a God who's on the move and demonstrates his power in ways that nobody conceptualizes. In other words, because God is in your life, God can do what can't nobody else do because he has both the power and desire to move in the lives of all his people. The Lord, he said, if it had not been the Lord, not just who was there, but who was on our side means operating on our behalf. Turn to your neighbor and say, God working for you while he's working on you. There's a unique relationship that takes place in the life of somebody who trusts God while God is moving on your behalf. That there's something happened when, when God is moving things out of your way and you're trusting him to do it. There's something special that happens. You know what happens? Your faith will grow in the Lord. 
Too many of us, God has done so much stuff for us and we didn't, we too busy complaining that we miss out on what God is doing. And I'm going to say it one more time. There are so many in the church who even when God is sustaining you and blessing you, you're busy worried about what's next or complaining about why it didn't go your way that you miss out on God's movement because if you see God do it, you trust God to do it again. How many have ever had God bring you out of something you couldn't got out by yourself? And now every time you look back, you say, you know what? I ain't going to worry about this because God did this already. God did it already. And I'm not worried about this next time because God has already done it. If it had not been the Lord who was assisting me, who was helping me, who was guiding me, who was protecting me. Who is building a fence around me? Who is my source of strength? If it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side? The psalmist says, now everybody said together, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Look at verse 2. Now here's what he does. He makes this declaration in verse 1 in regards to the reality of the people of God's situation. This speaks not only to the people of Israel at this time. This speaks to the people of God in, in, into eternity. If it had not been for the Lord, that's everybody's testimony. If it had not been for the Lord. But then he says, let me go ahead and remind the folk what you've been through. Let me put my glasses on. Verse 2. He says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side. He said, let me remind you again. What happened, David? He said, when men rose up against us. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, those people who rose up against us would have destroyed us quickly. Because their anger was directed toward us. Here's what David's talking about. David's, David, remember when David was, before he became a king, he was always dealing with the enemies. What was his first battle against the Philistines? And, and his battle with the Philistines never ended. They, they were way more Philistines. It seems like if you read the Bible, if you're not careful, you would think that Israel was bigger than the Philistines, but they weren't. Israel was small compared to the Philistines, but the reason why they got victory after victory after victory after victory wasn't because Saul was so great. It wasn't even because David was so great. It's because God was on the side of his people. David says, they always were bothering us. It's about eight different stories where the people of Philistia came against the people of Israel. And guess what? Eight different times they end up losing. Why? Because God was on their side. They were always mad at Israel. They always hated on Israel. They were always jealous against Israel. And David said, if it had not been for the Lord, they would have destroyed us. David says, if it had not been for the Lord, verse 4, then their presence and their vigilance against us would have overwhelmed us. We would have been run over, and verse 5, we would have been capsized by their presence, their power, and their uh, vigilance. But God was on our side. Can I, can I bring this up to 2022? We might not fight against people. We sure got to deal with some circumstances. Anybody had to deal with some circumstances that you thought were going to destroy you? Anybody had to deal with some stuff that you thought was going to get the best of you? Anybody had to deal with some stuff where you thought you were about to get turned all the way over because you had to go through what you had to go through? Well, guess what? Your testimony is the same as David. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, single parenthood would have killed me. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, cancer would have taken me away. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, my heart problem would have been my, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, addiction would have got the best of me. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I'd have been swallowed up. I'd have been destroyed. I'd have been turned over. I'd have been turned around. I'd have been turned out. But the Lord was on my side. Well, here's the, here's the response to this right here. Look at verse 8. As David says it, he moves from evaluating what he's been through to praising God for what he has brought him through. Because it again, David did an evaluation, verses 2, 3, 4, and 5. He says, let me evaluate. I've been through this, had to deal with Goliath, had to deal with the Philistines one time, had to deal with Saul trying to kill me, had to deal with the Philistines again. 
I got jacked up in zigzag. I had to hide in a cave. If it had not been for the Lord, in the Lord in any of those situations, he said, I'm busy, David. He said, I'd have been gone. But when he thought about it, he said, well, but I'm not gone. And he says in verse six, blessed be the Lord who instead of letting me go, instead of the Lord letting him get me, he have not given us as a prey to that teeth. Here's the picture. It's almost like David saying, I was in the mouth of the lion, but God wouldn't let the lion bite. I was in the grip of the bear, but God wouldn't let that bear tear me apart. He, he, I, I was in a difficult situation that they had counted me out, but God counted me back in. I, I, was, I looked like all was lost, but guess what? God turned it around. How many of y'all, how many of y'all used to watch wrestling? I ain't talking about Olympic wrestling. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about WWE, you know, where people, you know what I'm talking about. I used to do it down there. How many of us have seen somebody on their back and the referee slides in? One. Everybody's waiting. You at home waiting. What's going to happen? You're going to pin him? Two. And then when the referee raised their hand, he coming down, guess what? He powers out. Anybody ever seen that? Y'all seen it before. And, 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 and if, if that was your person down there, you celebrated that they were able to get out of the pinning situation. Well, let me tell you this right here. That's what God's doing. And that's what God, David is talking about. When it looked like all was lost, God came in. And it wasn't your power that brought you out. It was God's power that brought you out. Yeah, the enemy had you for a one count. And the enemy got excited. The enemy had you for a two count. And everybody got excited around. But when his hand went up the third time, God's hand moved. And let me tell you somebody. When God's hands move, can't nobody overpower God. When God says no, everybody else got to walk away. When God says not now, everybody has to leave you alone. When God says not him or her, everybody has to walk away. This verse 6 is important because it's an expression of acknowledgement of what God has done. Verse 7, he does another way, Red Park. He says, Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. In verse 6, he's talking about a predator that is looking to destroy us. They had us in their teeth, but God brought us out. In verse 7, however, He's talking about a trap. The bird that was trapped was oftentimes tempted into the trap with something that would appeal to them. See, you said a bird trap was something that a bird might like to have. And so they would set up the trap and the bird, not knowing it better, would do what? Would fly into the trap. And once the bird was trapped, guess what? It was all over. But look what he says in verse seven. We were in that situation. Our soul was trapped. And, and this is, a, in, in verse 6, it's talking about a physical attack. In verse 7, it's talking about spiritual attack. How many understand we endure spiritual attacks all the time? Everybody say that? You wonder, what, why am I wrestling with this? Spiritual. Why I got to go through this? Spiritual. Why am I so sad? Spiritual. Why am I in this funk? Spiritual. Why am I depressed? Spiritual. Some of us get sick physically because of spiritual attacks. I'm, I'm going to say that one more time. Sometimes you might be wondering, why well, I don't feel good. It's spiritual. The enemy is trying to break you down. But here's what David says when you realize what the prescription is that brought you out. David said, my soul was trapped. But it has escaped. Why? Because the snare is broken. In other words, what trapped you, God has broken it. So that you can do what? Fly away. I'm going to start pause on this one. Think about a time in your life that you were in a space that you never thought you'd come out of. It was a space 
Whatever caused it was what caused it. But you were in a dark spot. But then all of a sudden, you felt better. All of a sudden, you said, I'm going to make it. You know what happened? That trap that Satan has set for you, that you had messed around and walked into, God tore that trap up. Your joy came back. Your peace came back. Your, your, your ability to say, I know it's going to be all right, came back. Your walk changed. Your talk changed. Your love changed. Your living changed. Why? Because God tore up the trap. Tell your neighbor, God is a trap terror. He'll trap that trap up when it looks like all is lost. God, won't he do it? Won't he break it? Every now and then, when you realize you were there, you ought to stop what you're doing and say, thank you, Lord. On Facebook, if somebody posts when it's somebody's birthday or something, they say, stop what you're doing and give such and such a big shout out for having me. Everybody seen that on Facebook? I want to tell somebody, stop what you When you realize what God has done for you, I don't care if you're at work, stop what you're doing and take a step back. And lift up your hands and say, Lord, I thank you. I just, Lord, I just realized that, that you brought me through a dark place. Lord, I thank you that they thought they had me, but God, you lifted me up. Lord, thank you that I was going over bridge and the bridge broke, but you caught me. Lord, I say thank you because it wasn't nobody but you. Expression, my brother and sister, is important because if we don't express praise to God for what he's done, guess what? The enemy will make sure we forget what he's done. Can I say it again? If we don't deliberately, on purpose, lift up our hands and give God praise for what he's already done, you will mess around and forget what God has done. And as a result, you might miss out on your next blessing. I'm going to let y'all go. Let me tell you this one story. I'm going to let y'all go. When I was um, 23, that was a few years ago, I came out of school. Remember, Kish, you might remember this. You can't remember that far back? Okay. <laughs> but I came out of school. I'm going to tell you how this story. I got a job selling copy machines. Only problem was I never sold a copy machine. And they paid you when you sold the copy machine. So I remember driving up and down Buford Highway, knocking on the doors of companies. They were all white. And if they were going to buy a copy machine, they weren't going to buy it for this black boy from the South Side. They weren't going to do it. I knocked on the door and I made my presentation as best I could. And they would say, thank you, but we going with this other guy. One time the man said, well, I would buy it, but this company is owned by uh, Konica, whoever the, the coffee machine people. We can't buy it from you because we, we sell theirs. I'm talking about two straight weeks. I was knocking on doors, getting rejected. Two straight weeks. Two weeks I would go get up, put on my little suit, one little suit I had at the time, go to knock on doors and come home. My dad said, how'd I go today? I went all right. He said, what'd you say? I said, I ain't say nothing. After two weeks, you know, the company was kind enough to let me go because they told me I need to try something else. Fast forward 15 years, 20 years. Me and a couple of friends were riding down the street. Me and Pastor Harrison, as a fact, were riding down the street. And I started giving God praise. I'm talking about the whole street. I was just praising God. He didn't say nothing at first. When we got where we were going, he said, now, is something wrong with you? And I said, what you mean? He said, you just stop talking and start praising God. This, do you need to tell me something? I said, yeah, I do need to tell you something. I said, when we were riding down that street, I said, I thought back to that time when I couldn't get nothing going. I thought back to that time I had failure after failure after failure after failure. I thought back to that time that I thought that I had wasted my time and going to college. Maybe I wasn't smart enough. Maybe I wasn't good enough. But I said, but when I was riding down that street, I realized that God has been good to me. That even though I couldn't sell coffee machines, he had a whole nother work for me to do. And I couldn't help but just wave my hands. I didn't want to wait to 
until I got home to tell God how good he had been. I had to stop right there on Buford Highway for three and a half miles and say, Lord, you've been good to me. I say, thank you. I don't care what I've been through. You brought me through. You opened a door that couldn't nobody close. You were a bridge over troubled waters. God, you did it. And I got to say, thank you for it. We serve a God who is on our side. We serve a God who will never leave us nor forsake us. And because we serve that kind of God, let me read this last verse and I'm getting out of, my, getting out of here. The psalmist said, David said, now I realize something. He said, my help is in the Lord who made heaven and earth. David said, I look back over I realized I wouldn't have been here but for the Lord. I realized that God has brought me through the hills, toys, and snares, and dangers. He said, but as I think about it, I'm looking ahead now. See, in verse 8, David said, I'm looking ahead. He said, I know this. My help is in the Lord. David said, I don't have to call on the king. My help is in the Lord. David said, I don't have to look in the mirror because my help is in the Lord. And when your help is in the Lord, when you know your help is in the Lord, you are in position to live in victory. Why? Because when your help is in the Lord, he is able to bring you through it. He's able to bring you out of it. And he's able to give you the victory in every situation. Let me do this and I'm going to let y'all go. I had an interview session late last night. I talked to Joshua. I said, Joshua, how would you feel if I told you that the Lord has been the reason why you've made it through? I can hear Joshua say, you know what? I know it already because it was not for the Lord. We'd have never been able to bring down the walls of Jericho. If it wasn't for the Lord, we'd have never had victory at AI. He said, Thomas, I know what you're saying because if it wasn't for the Lord, the sun would have never stayed up 24 hours so that we could finish those battles. Thomas, I agree with you. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. I said, well, Joshua, I appreciate your help. I'm going to go over here and talk to David. David, what's your thoughts? David says, Thomas, I got to tell you, I wrote the psalm, but the more I think about it, the better I feel. Because if it wasn't for the Lord... When I was young and foolish, when I got messed up and did that thing with Bathsheba, if it wasn't for the Lord, I could have been dead right now. But the Lord sent somebody to remind me that I needed him. That's why, Thomas, I had to say, Lord, you created me a clean heart. That's why I had to say, Thomas, or renew a right spirit in me because I realized I need the Lord. I'm going to do one more conversation. I talked to Paul later. And I said, Paul, what would you say if I said if it had not been for the Lord on your side? Paul said, I told a Roman church there. He said, I told him, if God be for us, who can be against us? He said, I had to learn the hard way on the road to Damascus. And it wasn't nobody but the Lord that, that struck me blind and turned my life around. I learned outside the city gates of Maria. But if it wasn't for the Lord, I'd be dead. If it wasn't for the Lord, that boat I was on, that crashed, I'd have drowned in the ocean. If it wasn't for the Lord, when the snake bit me, I'd have died. If it wasn't for the Lord, Thomas, I agree. On my side, where would I be? Well, let me bring it up a little closer. Everybody here got a, if it wasn't for the Lord, testimony, don't you? If you got one, go ahead and look up to the Lord and tell the Lord. Whatever your, whatever your testimony is, look up. Lord, if it wasn't for you. When the doctor said three months, I'd have been gone a long time ago. Lord, but you moved in a way. Somebody, I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna step out of the way, put my mic down. But everybody, if you got a testimony, look up toward heaven and tell the Lord, thank you. Be specific.
got to be just a health situation. If you were in an impossible situation and you know it wasn't the Lord, look up and tell the Lord, thank you. Some, somebody here, somebody said you weren't going to be able to raise your family because you didn't have enough. Look up toward heaven and say, Lord, I thank you. Somebody tell him thank you. Don't, don't let this moment pass by. This moment may affect what goes on in your future. Look up toward heaven. You thought you wasn't going to make it, but the Lord said yes. everybody else said no and let me tell you it might have been somebody Lord sent somebody said well no nah, my mama helped me my daddy helped me yeah but guess who gave you your mom and daddy somebody said well, I got a right job at the right time yeah but guess who gave you the job at the end of the day the Lord is the giver for every good and perfect gift so our thanks ought to be to him who is able let me try that one more time as the music plays for a minute if you think about your life think about where you've been and if you know you got a, the Lord is on my side, you tell him that. Say, Lord, if it weren't for you. Sir. I'm telling somebody, the Lord told me to do this. Don't let this moment pass by. Let it come out of your mouth. Express it. Some of us ain't living in expectation because we ain't expressing gratefulness for what God has done because we're not declared that it's only by the power of God. Let it come out of your mouth. Express it to God. Say, God, I thank you. put the focus on people that accepted Christ and we're about to do that but right now I want to focus on the believer it's so important that as Christians we learn to express verbally and actively a gratefulness to God for what he's done for us see sometimes we can't move to the place of expectation if we can't get through the place of expression we bottle up our feelings we bottle up a lot of things but one thing we can't afford to bottle up 
is praise and thanksgiving to God. That's why the Bible says that we're to give God thanks in all things. Why? Because this is the will. Somebody say it's God's will. Forgive him thanks in all things. Why? Because it's his will for all of those of us who are in Christ Jesus. So if you're in Christ, if you're saved today, God is telling you, give me praise. God is saying, thank me for what I've done. God is saying, be grateful. God is not saying it because he wants your adulation. He deserves our adulation. He is saying, give it to me so I can give you something back. He said, give me my praise. to shout it out. It might help you. It might help you. It might help you. It might help you. It might, help you. It might, help you. It might open a door. It might open a door.
categories if you're in this place today and you're not saved or you're not sure about your salvation I swung by here today to tell you today is your day to walk out of the darkness into the marvelous wonderful majestic magnificent light of Jesus Christ and I want to tell you don't don't worry about what nobody might say or what nobody might do there's only one somebody determine your salvation you can only be saved if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died for you and that God raised you from the dead and the Bible says if you do that you shall be saved every head bow so if that's you and you ready for your new life in Christ you ought to just slide out the aisle if somebody in your way you ought to tell them excuse me I got a new life I'm walking to Second category is somebody, somebody who has had a relationship with Christ. You you receive Christ as your savior, but but for whatever reason you got off track. And that's what, that's what happens. I'm not even going gonna, to, gonna, don't feel bad about that. But the good news is you can get back on track. And so if you're saying I'm ready to get back on track, I'm ready to be restored. You do the same thing. Tell the person next to you, excuse me. I'm ready for my restoration. Third category of people. If you're in this place and you've received Christ and you just ready to go to work for the Lord. Maybe you've been on the sidelines watching, but now you're ready to get busy doing the work of the Lord. You do the same thing. Just say, Lord, here I come. Now, just as the music plays, every head bows, should nobody see nobody come. But if one, you're in one of those categories, you ought to come on down right now. The Lord is speaking to somebody. You hold it back. Don't you hold back. You done tried a whole lot of stuff. Now I'm telling you to, to try Jesus. wide open, waiting for you. Oh, 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 Lord, deliver me. Deliver me.
Father God, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you. We say thank you. You've been so good to us. If it had not been for you on our side, where would we be? We thank you, Lord, for those souls, those hearts that have come today for the reason of which you've ordained in their heart. And we pray, God, for somebody or some man or woman, some boy or girl who may have held out this day. God, give them one more chance to walk out of the darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. God, we love you. Somebody say that with me if you love the Lord. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We love you because you loved us first when we were dead in our sins. You gave us a Savior, Jesus. God, we love you. God, we thank you because you have been with us. You never left us nor forsaken us. God, we praise you because if it had not been for you, where would we be? In Jesus' name, we say thank you. Say it one more time with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And amen. Let's give God strong praise today. Give us strong praise. and minds now for pray I'm sorry for giving praise through giving and so if you can we're trying to get to communion where y'all can get on out of here but if you got something in your hand that you want to give all you need to do is lift it up and the usher's going to come get it from you now if you want to do online or those various methods in which we have they're on the screen and we encourage you to give. Here's what we do. We encourage you to give. Not because I'm up here asking. Not because nobody called you to tell you. We encourage you to give. Because when you give, that means you're entrusting God to your financial situation. Somebody say amen. And so it's not about what you give, how much you give. It's about saying, Lord, I trust you, so I'm giving this to you. Somebody say amen again. Amen. Let's play our announcements now. Use. The birthmark St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church welcome to the news you can use. The birth month ministry is sponsoring our pastor Eric Thomas birthday celebration today immediately following morning worship service. Would you like to have your youth participate in the Easter presentation? Sign them up today in the rear of the sanctuary. St. Peter's hosting chess after church Sundays February 5th through March 12th. Please register at macpchess.org. Women's Ministry In-Person Bible Study, Saturday, March 11th at 10 a.m., will be located in the Christian Education Building Lower Level. Living at Victory Men's Ministry, Saturday, March 11th at 10 a.m. It is our pastor, Eric Thomas' 19th pastoral anniversary, Sunday, March 12th. Our guest minister is Reverend Robert Sullivan. Expectation Moment, celebrating three years of in-person service, Wednesday, March 15th at 7 p.m. In-person Bible study, every Wednesday from 7 to 7.45 p.m. St. Peter's Food and Clothing Ministry, open Monday and Thursday weekly from 10 a.m. until 1.30 p.m. Only your ID needed. Commanding your day in prayer. Join with us every morning in prayer at 7 o'clock. Birthday blessings to all of our members born in the month of March. St. Peter, we're going to stay strong, start strong, and live in victory. Brought to you by Patricia and Pamela Clem. St. Peter Missionary. Amen. Those are announcements. Let's give God praise for them today. Has everybody had a chance to give? If you have, raise your hand. Have you missed it? Raise your hand. Somebody missed it. Okay, everybody good. Okay. I'm going to send it back over there to you. Just cook. I'm going to double up on it. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. So y'all, I was trying to hide it from y'all, but tomorrow is my 38th birthday. Okay, it may not be my 38th birthday. But just so y'all know how I do my math, my heart donor was 20, so he'd be 23. So I got a 23-year-old heart, got a 56-year-old body, so I'm 38, 39. I'm 39. Thank you, Real. I feel young. I don't walk young, but I feel young. Father God, we thank you for these gifts that have been given. We thank you for every heart that gave and every heart that had a desire to give. We are entrusting this to you, Lord, like you've entrusted all that we have to us, that you would take it and multiply it and use it for kingdom building. We are witnesses, Lord, of what you're able to do. We're witnesses that you can multiply the gifts of people who are cheerful givers. We ask you to do it, and we already say thank you. In Jesus' name, let the people of God say amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. Let us move swiftly. Prepare our hearts and minds for our communion ministers. Let's see, Deacon Thomas, we got some, what we got today? All right, we're going to do, we hadn't done this since 2015. No, 2020, I'm sorry. We're going to do right hand of fellowship today. Do y'all remember how to do it? All right, let's do it then. We're welcoming. How many people we got, D? Everybody, let me so they may not know. Everybody who's here that is a new member, if you've if you become a member of St. Peter since 2020, you ought to come on up here. I don't care if you got baptized or joined on the Christian experience, come on up here. We'll show you what it means in just a second. So if you're a new member, and I see some new members out there. Here comes song right now. Here we come. Here we come. Fancy. 
everybody who had been to St. Peter, this is what we used to do always on the first Sunday. We used to do it 120 years ago, so we just kept doing it. We got in the habit of doing it. So we're, we're going to do it every we're gonna do it every quarter, but we had not done it now in, in almost three years. So we're grateful to be able to do this again. Let's give God praise for all of our new members that are here today. Give, give God praise for them. Amen. Amen. And now we're moving swiftly as fast as the deacons can get in position to our moment of communion. As you move into position, we want to thank God for all those our guests are here. Is that anybody, everybody from Cleveland, Ohio, stand up today. Everybody from Cleveland, Ohio. Stand up, Cleveland. Let's give God praise for these two ladies who came from Cleveland, Ohio to be with Sister Brenda Ray and did not count a robbery to join us here at church today. God bless you both. God bless you, Cookie, Sister Marissa. Good to have y'all here. One from Pennsylvania. I'm sorry. This Pennsylvania stand. Amen. God bless you. We got, okay, we're glad to have both of you all, but we have you all here today as well. Thank God for you all traveling today as well to join us. As we know that this is a sacred moment in the body of Christ. Doesn't matter what denomination is a sacred moment as we come today to celebrate communion. Somebody say we celebrate it. This moment of communion is sacred, but it's also a celebratory because we are, in fact, obeying the words of Jesus during the last hours of his earthly ministry. And so I want to remind everyone, if you've accepted Christ, you're saved, and you've been a part of the body of Christ, then you are well able to participate. Matter of fact, I encourage you to participate this day because this day we're doing that which God is, Jesus has told us to do. If you have not been saved, then we ask you to re refrain from this until you are in fact saved. But we look forward to that day when you receive Christ, that day when we can receive communion together. Just as a reminder, as we prepare our hearts and minds for prayer, the Bible lets us know in the book of Corinthians that in Corinth, some people didn't take this as serious as they should. And, and, and it wasn't so much that that they were busy doing other stuff. Some folk were just mad at somebody else and they allowed that burden, that separation between them and other believers to create a gulf. And if you're mad at somebody today, my recommendation, my suggestion strongly is that you ask God to give you a heart to forgive them so that as you take this communion, you would not take it in damnation to yourself. That's what happened in Corinth. In Corinth, some people got sick and some folk died because they took communion with the wrong heart and the wrong spirit. And so let me tell you this right here, I don't care what nobody did to you, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it to hold it and miss out on the blessings of God. And so I invite you, encourage you just to let it go. Somebody tell your neighbor, let it go. Somebody tell your neighbor, God forgave you, you forgive them. And see, the thing about forgiveness, nobody even has to ask for it. You can just let it go. You can just forgive because because you just want to do it. Amen. So let us pray individually. And then we're going to pray collectively and ask God to search our hearts to show us what we are needing forgiveness of. And then we ask God to forgive us. And here's what the Bible says. The Bible says if we confess to God that he's faithful, if we confess our sins to God, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. How about that? and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. I got to define this now. Confession is not you telling God something he don't know. That word confession agree means you agreeing with God. God saw it. You just agreeing with God with what he already saw. So let us pray.
Father God, in the name of Jesus, your people have gathered in this place today. And even, Lord, we have gathered in this place through virtual methods. But we've come today, Lord, first of all, as we've done, to give your name the praise. And we continue to praise you, Lord, for all that you've done. We continue to praise you. Because we know that if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be? Then, God, we come today to hear your word. We didn't come to hear the preacher. We came to hear from you. And we thank you, Lord, for your word this day. And now, God, we come to this sacred moment in which we are moving and operating in obedience to Jesus and coming together to celebrate and share this holy communion. We pray, God, that you would prep our hearts and our minds, Lord, that you would remind us of our shortcomings, our sins, and that you would give us the capacity to ask for forgiveness of sins that we may be prepared for this moment. God, we come to you like David did. Lord, purge us with hyssop. Blot out our transgressions. Scrape away the barnacles that sin has caused upon by our hearts. We ask God that you then renew in us. Give us a renewed heart, a new spiritual heart. And then God, renew a right spirit within us. Lord, connect your Holy Spirit with us, Lord, that we may be filled with your Holy Spirit. And we pray, God, as we take this communion, we take it in every moment of this process of the sharing of the bread and sharing of the wine. Lord, we ask you, we just be reminded of what you did for us. Help us to be reminded, Lord, and out of your love. Not because we deserved it, not because we even asked for it, but out of your love, you gave your only begotten son, Jesus, to die for our sins. Remind us, Lord, of the love of Jesus and that he took off and laid aside his glory, took upon himself the form of a servant, flesh and blood, came down through 40 and two generations, was born of a virgin, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Let us be reminded of the love of Jesus that he endured prosecution, persecution from all manner of people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, and the Herodians, that he dealt with that. But ultimately, Lord, he died for our sins. That we may be able to have a right relationship with you and that we will be able to have eternal life. Let us, if you would, Lord, imagine. Let us experience the fact that Jesus when he was in the upper room knew what was about to happen yet he pressed on let us imagine Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane when he went to pray and came back and the disciples had fallen asleep and he prayed some more and sweat fell down his head like great drops of blood let us imagine when the Roman soldiers came and took him into custody Remind us, Lord, that Jesus didn't get taken prisoner, but he laid down his life. Remind us, Lord, that at any moment Jesus could have called our legions of angels and they would destroy every Roman soldier, but we wouldn't be saved. Remind us that he submitted. Remind us, Lord, that he was led from courtroom to courtroom. Where not one prosecutor, not one judge could find any real charges against him. They couldn't find nothing because he had done nothing. Yet they did it all night. And then finally, Lord, after the, one of the judges finally broke and made up something, remind us that they whipped him all night long. They spit on him all night long. He endured stripes. But Lord, remind us that by those same stripes, we are healed. Thank you, Lord. Remind us that it wasn't over there, but the next morning they gave him an old rugged cross. And he carried that rugged cross up a hill called Golgotha. And Despite all his struggle with that cross, he took it to the top. And then, those same Roman soldiers, they are nails in his hands. They are spikes in his feet. They were so punitive and petty, Lord, that they placed a crown of thorns on his head to mock him. And as they pressed down on those crowns, it drew blood that ran down his face. 
Let us be reminded, Lord, that they pierced him in his side. And even as the blood and water rushed from his body, Lord, he hung there for us. Remind us, Lord, that at any point in time, again, he could have come down, but he stayed until he said, it is finished. Father, he said, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Remind us of that, Lord, that we may celebrate and love you even more. Bless us, keep us in this sacred moment. It is in Jesus' name. And finally, Lord, we say that you remind us that that's not where the story ended. But remind us, Lord, that three days later, early on a Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
same night that Jesus was betrayed he and his disciples gathered together in the upper room to celebrate the Passover feast and even as they gathered Jesus spoke to his disciples and talked to them and he took the bread and told his disciples this is my body which is broken for you and he said to them this do ye as often as you get together in remembrance of me and they took the bread and they ate it And likewise, after they supper, they took the cup and Jesus said to the disciples, this is my blood. They said for you for the remission of sins. He said, this do you as often as you get together in remembrance of me. And they took the cup and they drank all of it. And the Bible is clear that the disciples left the upper room. They didn't leave that sorrowful, but instead they left joyful because the Bible says they left singing a hymn. Something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Yeah. There's something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Something on the inside, working on the outside.
Some of y'all look tired, and y'all can take the rest of the day off. After you leave here, take the rest of the afternoon off. Let us stand. Let us stand. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm so glad you were here. Y'all tell your neighbor, so glad you're here. Tell your neighbor. Turn to one more person. I'm glad you're here today. Just as a reminder... As a reminder, we will be having expectation moment tonight. Let me say this. Every day at 12 o'clock noon, we are on our prayer line um, doing our Lent prayer. And so if you, are, if you can take 10 minutes out of your day, join us on our prayer line. If you don't have it, it's on your program. It's on the board. It's on the website. Somebody else in here know it and got it in their phone. But let us try to see this week can we have more and more participation. Next door. Okay, next door, um, there's some ice cream and cake. I'm guessing that's for my birthday. Okay. All right. Next, ice cream and cake next door. So y'all join me next door for some ice cream and cake for somebody's birthday. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you for this day. We thank you for this moment. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity you gave us to celebrate this day, this moment of sacred communion. God, as we leave this place, keep your hands on us. Let us keep our eyes on you. We love you. We thank you. And we praise you. Not to him that is able to keep us from falling, be the to the all wise God. Be power, majesty, dominion now and forever. Let us say it together three times. Amen. 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 If you got time, join me next door. I'm wearing this. If I go home, I'm not coming here. I don't want to do it.